Hi you guys, welcome back to the sew along. Even though this is episode one and you would think, well, this is the very first video. It's actually not. This is our second video because I like to do an episode zero that includes all the prep work that you need to do leading up to today. So if you haven't seen that video, if you have not, for example, cut out your fabric, you're gonna be way behind today. So go back to episode zero. I've got it linked here. I've got it linked in the description box. Can't miss it. But for everyone else that's all ready to go, you have your um, interfacing adhered to the appropriate fabric pieces. You've got zippers, you've got everything cut out and ready to sew. You have your machine um, needles changed. And if for everyone else, if we are going by the McCall's 8121 Sew Along Workbook, um, then you know to buy today, we should have a lot of stuff done already. If you don't have this workbook, it's a hundred percent free. Um, I created it just for this sew along and just for this jacket that we are working on today. Um, all right. So we should have from this list here, most of this stuff done already. Our entire shopping list is done. All of our planning is done. Our prep work is done. Every single one of these boxes should be checked off at this point. And today we are starting with the very first day of the sewing. And if you flip to the next page of your workbook, then you know exactly what we are going to be sewing each and every day. So today, Tuesday, we've got the right front, the right front band, left front, left front band, and we're also going to sew the welts. These videos are very long. I'm not gonna take up too much time. I just wanna point out there are chapters. So if you start and stop your sewing, you don't sew all of this today or you sew part of it in the morning and part in the evening, you can stop and start with the chapters and pick up right where you left off and not have to like skim through the video and try and figure out where it is that you left off. So check the chapters if you're coming back for a second view. Um, otherwise, let's get to the cutting table, to the work table so that we can Start sewing. Oh, and turn on your irons. All right, so first things first, we're gonna be grabbing pattern piece number one. Here she is here. And we're gonna be stay stitching the side front edge of piece number one. Now, because we have so many pattern pieces that are one layer, meaning the right side and the wrong side is very important. Um, if you sew something backwards, then you're going to end up with a garment where it has like two lefts or whatever. Okay, so we want to make sure we mark all of our right sides. So the right sides on all of these should be facing up. So I'm just going to put a pin in piece number one like this. So our very first step here is to stay stitch this um, front edge. Uh, because we're getting ready to ease this into the side piece, we want to make sure we stay stitch it so when we clip into this seam, we have a guide as to where not to clip through. All right, so now that we have our stay stitching, you can barely see it because my <laughs> thread matches so well. We're going to be taking piece number two, which is your side piece. Again, I have the right sides marked and we're going to be placing it right sides together with your right front. Now, there is a left and right side to the side piece. So you see how one has one notch and another has two notches. We want to make sure we're matching up the one with one notch to this piece here. So you can get them backwards if you try really hard, but see how this has the two notches? So I know that this side over here is what get, gets attached to the back side, and this is what gets attached to the front side. And since we're going right sides together, because I have my pins touching, I know that this is the way that it goes in. All right, so this top line gets lined up. Our raw edges get lined up there. And then our bottom edges get lined up below here. And I'm trying to also keep my little plaids lined up best I can. I might not be perfect throughout, but we're gonna do our best. Okay, and so now we need to ease all the rest of this stuff in together. There is a notch, is it here? That goes with this notch here. You can see kind of the situation we have is that the, what piece is this? The bottom one, the um, right front is kind of nice and taut, but the side piece is loose. So we need to clip into piece number one, the right front, 
every inch or so right up to that seam line. And that way, when we do that, I'll show you, and then you lay these on top of each other. Now, all of a sudden, the back, the um, right front is spreading out so that it lays nice and flat with the side piece. This is just kind of like princess seam, curve sewing. When you're, when you're trying to sew a convex curve into a concave curve, this is what you are going to need to do. Anytime you do princess seams, sometimes collars, you know, all of that kind of stuff. So this is a good trick to practice and learn. Okay, cool. So now we're going to our machine. We're stitching this here. We're putting this to the side for later, the other side of side, the side piece. And then you have the option to also top stitch this seam whenever you get done. So if you cannot press your seam allowance as well, top st stitching is a really good choice. Mine are going to press like a dream. So I'm not worried about that too much. All right, so here's what we have, removing these seam allowances, I mean, these pins from the seam allowance, and you can see, now we have, we can we know which one's our right side because we have a seam there, and we have this beautiful seam where you can see nice and flat on both sides. So I'm gonna go press all of mine open. Again, if you were top stitching, then you were gonna wanna press to the front piece and then top stitch 1 16th, 1 8th from this seam line. Like a dream. And I did pretty good matching them. And I'm not going to be able to match all the way across because again, these are curves. And so you just, you can't match straight lines with curves, but not bad. And then if you want to clip your threads as you go, that's also a really good practice. I'm not going to be the best at that either, but we're going to try. Okay. All right. So now we've got piece number three. We're on step number five, where we are going to be attaching the right front band to the lower edge of this piece that, that we've just created. So we're going to match notches, stitch, trim seam allowances, and then press seam allowances toward the band, which is going to be down. Okay. So we have a little notch here, right? And then in our front piece, our right front, there should be a notch down here somewhere as well. It's right there. So those are the things that we are lining up. Again. All right, and there she is. You can see I cut this on the bias, so it's looking super cute and preppy already. So exciting to see it come together. Okay, so now we are gonna be working on the welt pockets, but what they want us to do is reinforce this here. So we are gonna be stitching a little stitching line right between these two small dots. You can see where those dots were marked and I'm gonna be stitching in between them, like in between the two pins vertically. Um, and then we are gonna take our piece number four, interface, interfaced welt pockets, and we are going to press them wrong sides together, okay? Uh, we are going to match up the long edges and we are going to baste all along this uh, long edge here at a quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, so now that we have those in place, okay, so we've got our line marked and we're gonna be placing the welt on the fabric with the seam, the basting line that we just made along the lower stitching line. So there's the upper stitching line and then the lower stitching line. The basting that we just did literally gets placed right on top of this, okay, like so and we are gonna be stitching between the small circles, all right? So stitch across here only in between your dots, your small dots. Okay, I wanna show you up close what we've got here. So we have our welt folded wrong sides together. The folded edge is toward the band of your jacket. The raw edge of the welt is facing like your shoulder. Then you have um, the ends of the welt five eighths inch of them are loose, not sewn down at all on either end, okay? And then we have it stitched through and through, uh, where is it, right here, along the 
quarter inch seam line of the welt. And we can kind of set this aside for a minute because we are gonna be finishing the lower edge of the pocket facing with a zigzag or overlock stitch. Let's mark our right sides. And now I know that I'm gonna be finishing down here along these two edges. Okay, so the pocket facings are finished along that bottom edge. They go like this. And we also need to grab piece number six. On number six, you should have your stitching lines traced on. I've got mine drawn on here, but we are placing the wrong side of the pocket facing, this guy, to the right side here, like so. We are gonna stitch, we're gonna go ahead and do this to both of these, to so go ahead and get them prepared. We have our raw edges all lined up. Remember, your finished edge goes towards the bottom, and we are gonna stitch along the seam line, basting um, these two things together along this uh, raw edges here, here, and here. Same for this guy. And then we're gonna stitch 1 8 of an inch seam allowance along here, just to get these two things adhered to each other. Then. All right, so we've got our jacket, we've got our pocket. Now, the right side of the pocket has the facing on it. We're gonna be placing this right sides together on our jacket, but this guy goes on the bottom edge. So it actually gets placed right sides together with this thing facing toward you and away from the pocket. You should also have your little box for the welt um, traced on. Do you remember the Stitching line we made on the actual welt itself. We have our small dots, and then what do you know? We have small dots here too. So that is what we're gonna be matching up. We're matching the lower edge of our piece six box on the edge of stitching that we've got at our welt. Boom, okay, so now we're going to our sewing machine and we are stitching only the long edge, the top long edge and the bottom long edge. We're leaving the middle line just as it is. Um, so just stitch along the top and the bottom line, that's it. Do not stitch these side edges either. All right, so this is when things get scary. <laughs> else to say it we're going to be cutting through all of this fabric so if you are feeling at any at all insecure about this and you're like I don't know if I've got my line straight I don't know if I feel confident about this abort now um just go ahead and rip everything out and you just won't have pockets and you can skip all of this pocketing instructions for everyone else we are going to cut through the middle line not past where these little triangles are, just through the middle line that says, I think it says slash on your pattern piece. Once you do that, and then you cut through your jacket as well. <laughs> you cut through the jacket as well. I know, it's a lot. And then we also cut through to these little diagonal lines. Just get some really sharp scissors. These are failing me at the tips. They need to be sharp all the way to the very, very edge so you can get right in there. And again, do not clip the welt. And then once you're done with all of this clipping, then everything gets turned through to the wrong side. And that's how you get a beautiful welt pocket. Okay, accuracy, 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 okay? The cutting is accurate, the sewing is accurate, it's all accurate. All right, so now all of this gets turned to the wrong side. Okay, this is a sloppy <laughs> rendition of it, but this is what we're going for. You need to spend a lot of time at your iron, pressing these little corners, clipping them even more if you need to, to make sure that everything is nice and flat. Obviously this hasn't been pressed at all. Um, and then, once all that gets pressed nice and beautifully, this guy here gets turned up and the, the raw edges that are up top here, this guy, this raw edge here, and this uh, raw edge with the facing, those get sewn together along the top and down the sides. Now, when you're going down the sides, you are catching everything. You've got the little itty bitty triangle pieces from 
the corners of here, these little triangles that are left over, all of that gets um, stitched in. Um, all of that gets stitched down here. The only thing that's free is the actual jacket itself. So then you're gonna stitch along here and same thing on this other side. And of course, like I said, across the top. So spend a good amount of time on your welt pockets, um, pressing them, clipping them, and getting them to be as accurate as possible. All right, I fibbed a little earlier. So I've got my sides of my little pocket bag sewn. What we're actually gonna do is we're gonna sew across the top, but we're gonna leave this little flappy part free. Oops. We're gonna leave this little flappy part free. So we're gonna stitch across here. We can even baste it. Leave this little part free. Okay, so after you stitch the pocket bag, then you turn this guy down. Oh, how do I explain it? Almost kind of like under stitching in a way, so it stays where it's supposed to stay. Okay, and once you're done with the right side, then you're gonna do everything again for the left side. You're gonna be stay stitching this guy here, sewing these pieces together, sewing the band on, and then doing your welt for the left side as well. Okay, so I finished my left side and my best advice for you here, my best little bit of encouragement is to not try and be too perfect about it. We are gonna see imperfections that no one else is gonna see, especially from like far away. Nobody is gonna be this up close to your pockets, I promise. And just be proud that you even did a welt. They get easier as the more times you do them, meaning like the understanding of the construction gets simpler. Execution is still very difficult. Um, if you're a perfectionist and you wanna keep practicing this, um, my best advice is just, again, with the accuracy, like accuracy of transferring the dots, of transferring the lines and the markings, um, transfer or accuracy and cutting of the little triangles, all of that super, super, super accurate. And that's how you're going to get perfect welts. They are difficult. They are not meant to like, I'm not sugarcoating anything here. They're hard to do. And you can even tell mine aren't perfect. Like it's a little bit of a humbling experience, even for me. So if you attempted them, I'm so proud of you. You should be so proud of yourself too. If you didn't and you just have a jacket without pockets, that's fine also. Totally, totally fine. So there we have our right front and left front. All right, so Tuesday's checklist is totally done. We have sewn everything in the Tuesday category. Yay, go us. So as we make our way through the process of making this jacket, I want to encourage you to use the entire workbook. This will help you stay motivated. This will help you stay accountable to yourself and it'll help you stay on track. There is a task checklist that again is um, meant for you to kind of track your progress. So are you in the planning phase of it? Is it in progress or is it totally done? So this will help you know where you are if you have to stop and come back to it. This will help you know where you are. Plus checking off progress is, I don't know, so satisfying. We also have a social media checklist um, where you can uh, post whatever you want throughout the week, but I've given little prompts um, of different aspects of the sew along of the jacket as you're sewing it um, that you can take a picture of and post so that you don't have to think about, well, what do people want to see? Um, so just brag on yourself a little bit. Look at these welt pockets I made. Look at this zipper I put in, you know, all of that fun stuff. Uh, hashtags and uh, my handle is at the bottom as well to make sure that I see what you're posting and that others who are following along can see what you're posting as well. And then we have a really fun daily checklist. So every day we are going to be watching the video, sewing the specific steps for that day. Then you must tidy your sewing room after every day. You have to um, post the social pic that I just talked about and then celebrate. Celebrate each day, you guys. Celebrate accomplishing something in your sewing room every single day. I created this workbook not only to just like give you something to do during the sew along, but to really change the way you think about sewing and making progress in your sewing room and doing something amazing, you guys. What we do is amazing and that should be celebrated. Tomorrow we will be back for Wednesday's checklist. Um, so get all of that stuff ready to go for tomorrow. Grab your zippers, all of that kind of stuff. Um, and I'll meet you back here tomorrow for the next part of this sew along.